Okay, hello everyone. This is Vicki Burley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess, and I'm coming at you today to do a little video about people who have passed on. And um, I can only speak from my personal experience, um, but I do want to say that of all the books that I've encountered, I feel like Michael Newton's um, Journey of the Soul and Destiny of the Souls, I feel like those two books to me resonated the most as truth. Um, when I read those books, and it is based on regression. It is based on scientific evidence, thousands, hundreds or thousands of regressions, and it, it goes beyond just the light and the tunnel and the near-death experience into uh, in-between lives. And um, there's lots of data, and I think it's like uh, if everybody would just read these two books, uh, you know, they would end all religious wars there are, because I think it pretty much covers everything. But um, I'm not here to discuss his findings, I'm here to discuss my personal experiences and what I've encountered. Uh, the first thing is you got to trust your own symbols, you know. People get, are getting symbols all the time from loved ones who have passed on. And they're maybe not just not open to it. Um, and you blow it off as, a, oh, it's just a coincidence, or you don't want to believe it's true. Or very often you may be caught up in your own grief, and you just can't, you know, you can't get out of your grief. And I've been there, you know, I've, I've lost loved ones, and I do know how, how that can be. I mean, there's many things like getting chills, that's confirmation. Um, often I will see somebody in a crowd, you think you see their face, but then you realize, no, they're dead, and then you don't see them anymore. Uh, at a bus stop, in a car. I mean, those they really are making appearance. Um, and that, that is real, and you need to just trust that and go with it, because that is real. Dreams. I mean, that is the number one way. Everybody's had dreams about loved ones. And what's happening is, you really are with them. Your spirit and their spirit are meeting and together. And with my experience, what I feel like there is, there's like, here's the earth plane, and then there's the astral plane, and I call it the land of the dead, I don't really know. But I feel like they can come to the astral plane and you can come to the astral plane. Like they can't come back into the earth dimension anymore and you can't go past a certain point. Um, so there's this middle ground that you kind of meet at. and. Um, in mine, there's always some deep chasm you've got to go through, some deep down underground thing you've got to go through. Sometimes there's a bus station, but it always seems like there's this big dip you have to go through to get there. And then you meet there and you talk. And I have dreams constantly about um, people who have passed on. And believe me, it is real. You are really, con you are really with that soul. Um, Sometimes I feel like you can feel death coming. I could. When I was, and I didn't really know what it was. I remember the first time this happened, I was a young child, and um, it was right around Christmas time, which, you know, that is a time when the veil is thin. You know, the veil is very thin around the Christmas and New Year's holidays, and a lot of people do pass. There's a lot of souls coming and going uh, at that time, and I, I feel the veil is thin. Um, so the first time this happened was at Christmas, and I was so scared. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to leave the house. I felt like I was going to die. And now I realize I think I felt death coming, because what happened was a bunch of people died. Nobody like none of my peers, it was my friend's grandmother and I think a couple people from the bar. But it was people that I did know and they all passed right away. At the, and then it, that showed me that, oh, that's, that feeling is not that I'm going to die, it's that death is sort of coming. And I think I can kind of sense that and I think a lot of people can. The very first encounter that I had with somebody who was like my peer, was a friend that I grew up with, and he was a musician too, he was a drummer, and he passed suddenly from a brain aneurysm. And I think he was maybe, he was like 21 or something, and I was maybe 17, you know, I was a little younger, but we hung out all the time, we used to jam and stuff and go to shows, you know, concerts and stuff together. So anyways, he passed away, and I'm laying in my bed at night, going to sleep, and all of a sudden, I'm seeing this body materialized like just like what it looked like was just like on Star Trek you know when they uh, beam me up Scotty or whatever it was like that I flipped I got so afraid I'm hiding under my covers freaking out I'm like go away go away <laughs> you know, I was really really scared and um, while I was cringing under the covers he like sent me a vision and it was a conversation that I didn't even remember it was me and him and this other guy that we hung out with um, I'm not gonna say any names but and we were buzzed, okay? We had been drinking and partying. It was after we jammed. And we were walking up to the store to get munchies. And we were talking about death. And we had said, we, we said, well, whoever dies first is going to have to come back and tell the other ones what it's like. 
and that he, he showed me that conversation, which I had no recollection of even saying. It was years before that, you know, a few years before that. Um, and then, so then I'm like, I don't want to know, I don't want to know. And I felt like I'm hiding and I'm all freaked out and I'm all afraid. So he went away, you know, he didn't, he wasn't trying to scare me, he was just trying to honor our agreement, you know. Um, so then the, the, his funeral was whenever, a day or two later, and I came back from the funeral and I sat down to play music and I wrote this beautiful, I saw myself out of body, flying past, it was on our way to the moon was the name of it, and I saw myself flying over the moon. So he, he came back in a, in a different way that it was more easy for me to accept and understand and not, not so scary. So, you know, that'll happen too. People get scared, and I was definitely scared. Um, so what happens when souls are out of body, you see the big picture. You're not confined to your earthly beliefs anymore. And I know when my mother, uh, like she had a, a, her father, from all accounts I'd ever knew him, but was, you know, a, not a good guy. You know, he was um, a violent alcoholic and everything, and, and none of the kids, her or her siblings, have a, a good word to say about him, you know, or, you know, my grandmother either, his ex-wife. But at any rate, my mom, I remember my mom having a dream, and she says, yeah, and I had a dream after my grandmother died, her mother. And she says, my mom brings my dad forward, and he's hugging me. She goes, well, that's not my dad. That, that's, that He wasn't like that. I said, well, he's in spirit now. He knows what he did wrong, and she just couldn't get that. She couldn't understand that, but that's how it is. You know, they see all their misdeeds and how they hurt you, and, and the ego is gone, and they can look at it from, like, the bigger picture. Um, when my dad died, um, he was sending me waves and waves of energy. It was, like, coming in waves or blankets of energy, and then, actually, I ended up having, like, anxiety problems after that, which I never did. I think the energy was almost too much for my little human um, nervous system to handle. You know, it was like too much of an influx of energy. So that can happen too. Um, one of the things that I've noticed too, like the longer they're gone, the less their energy sort of dissipates and it's not the same anymore. You know, they've, they're detached from this human form and it's, it's like weaker is not a good example, but weaker, um, it's just different. It's like dissolving or dissipating. It's not, they're not, it's not so confined. When they first die, they're very much like their human form. And as time goes by, it changes. It definitely changes. Um, now people can leave the earth plane fast when they die or slow. And I've seen both. Like my grandmother, when she passed, she couldn't wait to get out of here. She was like, see ya. You know, she was gone. And her thing was crazy when I saw her. Um, she did come and say goodbye to me. And she was young again, and she was with my uncle, her son, uh, the soldier, which was my uncle who died in, in service. Um, so she was with him, and she was young and beautiful, and she was dressed from like the 1940s, and she just waved goodbye to me, and then it was like as if she morphed dimensions. It's like, it's 3D, and then it just went flat, and then it just dissolved, and she was gone. You know, she did not stick around. She was ready. She was ready to get out of here. Now my brother, when he died, it was a completely different story. My brother died suddenly at a, a young age, and that was the first person that was really, really, you know, uh, that was the worst thing. I've, I mean, 10 years later, and I'm probably still not over it. That was really horrendous. That was really horrible. Um, but anyways, the day he died, I'm there. He lived in the house next to the bar. I'm at the bar with my mom and a few people. You know, they're waiting for the whatever to pronounce him dead, the people to come. And he's, he's in my ear. He was talking in my ear from that minute. He's like, yeah, Vic, you wouldn't believe it. One next thing I know, I'm out of my body. And he's just like, blah, 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 blah. And he, I see him in, 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 in the house over there, which I, he had not lived there very long. And I had not been in the apartment since he moved in. I'd been in the apartment for him. My dad used to live there. But I'd not been in the apartment since he lived there. And he's standing there, and he's, there's a mattress in the living room. And that's what I saw. And I'm just like, well, why is the you know, mattress in the living room? Didn't find out till way later that he did, in fact, have his mattress in the living room. That's where the, the body was. But he was out of the body, standing next to the bed. And he's just trying to tell me all about it. And I'm like, I was just like not having it. I was so immersed in grief. I'm like, no, you're dead. You, you're done. You can't come back. He's like, no, I'm just out of my body. And blah, 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 blah. So anyways, you know, he stayed with me for months. He wouldn't, I mean, he wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> So finally, I even got annoyed. It was a while later, and I just said, I go to him, I go, Lenny, shouldn't you be with Dad? And then he stopped talking, because he was just talking for months. He was with me constantly. And then, but he didn't leave. 
he stopped talking, but I felt like he was still with me for a long time after that. But he was just sort of staying in the background and um, sort of being quiet. And now he's, I think he has finally moved on. It's been nearly 10 years. It's going to be 10 years soon. Uh, but lately I've been seeing him. And one of the things, uh, one of the things that we do, well, while he was still in my ear talking all the time, I was, that's when John Edward had a TV show on, the, the, you know, he would do them, he was the medium, John Edward. And I was watching the John Edwards show, and they were talking about 9-11 victims and how somebody was finding pennies, and it was pennies from heaven. And my brother, Lenny, he's like, yeah, Vic, let's do that. Let's do that pennies from heaven. So then I'm finding pennies everywhere, and I said, Len, listen, this is chump change. I said, this is jump change. I said, let's let's up it a little. And all of a sudden, I won I won a large sum of money shortly after that, several thousand dollars. And then I started finding dimes. So then now to this day, if I find dimes, I know it's my brother around. Um, and I've been seeing him lately all over the place. He's sort of all of a sudden been coming back lately. Um, another thing with the dimes, this just happened real recently too. Um, this happened real recently. Uh, I still have my mother's house that we all grew up in and everything, and um, the girl across the street who was my brother's best friend really should have married her. We always thought they would end up together, whatever, but um, her current boyfriend was thinking about, was maybe interested in the house, so I took him over there. I'm showing him the house. I walk in. Now, the house has been cleaned out for a while now, you know, and I walk in the bedroom, which was not my brother's bedroom, by the way. It was my parents' bedroom. I walk in the bedroom and right away I make a beeline. I see a dime in the corner of the, the room there. As I'm picking up the dime and I'm about to tell them the story about how when I find dimes it reminds me of Lenny, the girl who knew my brother well, you know, said, I feel a presence in here, just as I'm telling them the story about the dime. You know, so he was definitely there that time. So that happens too. Another person who was talking in my ear, there was a guy who actually passed in the bar. He had a heart attack and like died right, well he actually, he wasn't pronounced dead until a couple of days later they unplugged him, but he died in the bar. He dropped dead right in front of us in the bar. So I go to his funeral, and I'm leaving the funeral, and he's talking away in my ear, like my brother. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> not, not another one of these, you know. So I say to him, I says, dude, shouldn't you be back at the funeral parlor <laughs> with your body? And he says, that's what's cool about being dead. You can be in more places, you can be in more than one place at once. So that was kind of a little interesting thing. Um, other things that have happened to me, and I, and I talked about this a little bit in the soulmate uh, video, I've been led to, the spirit will like lead me to the obituary of themselves. And I've, that's happened to me more than once. That happened recently. There was a girl who I was pretty good friends with, that, you know, but we had kind of lost touch. You know, I hadn't really seen her in several years. At the time, there was a, a, an old boyfriend from way back that had found me online, and we had started corresponding. Now, he doesn't live in the same state anymore, so we were corresponding online. Which, by the way, I met him 27 years later. So talk about, that's a Saturn, the astrologers out there, you know, that's a Saturn cycle. At any rate, um, so the whole time, this, there's this female spirit, and I kept, and I felt like she was facilitating our, our reunion. That's what I even told him. I said, there's this female spirit around us, around me, or around that, I just said, there's this female spirit that is facilitating our reunion. And she kept like, she was almost like coaching me or encouraging me to keep communicating with this guy. So, you know, I kept asking him, I go, it's nobody I know or nobody's passed. I go, is there somebody that you know that's passed? And he's like, no, well, maybe it's somebody, you know, he had an idea of somebody from way back. Well, it didn't pan out with that guy. And when it finally did, you know, I kind of, you know, we went our separate ways. Um, I was led to the obituary and it was this girl that I knew. And the, the, how I knew that it was her, like we, I had cor started corresponding with this guy right around the beginning of September, and that's when she had actually passed. So she had passed at that time. I didn't know it, but she was like trying to help me connect with this, this guy. And she was very soft and sweet, and, but that's how she was in life, too. <laughs> These animals are really talking up a storm behind me. I think they may want me to leave. But anyways, um, I'm going to finish the video regardless. <laughs> um, um, there's been several times when people have passed that I've, I've read, I've done a reading, a tarot reading for them, pretty close prior to their actual death. Um, and the, it, what's crazy is I didn't see it coming in either case. 
because in both cases it showed up to be something great and beautiful and wonderful happening in their lives. Uh, the first was my grandmother. Uh, I'd done a reading for her and at the time she was had early stages of dementia and they've been talking about doing a surgery on her carotid artery because they thought that that was blocking blood flow to the brain and that that might be a success and so she was you know looking into having this surgery done and I'm reading the cards I'm going oh you're gonna have that surgery and you're gonna feel good as new I, I, I think this is gonna be such a great thing for you and you're gonna and I had, you know the world and all the all the great cards that were in the in the deck and you're gonna feel like your old self again. That's what I kept telling her. Well then, here she passed shortly after that. And then, but see, she did feel like her old self again, I'm sure, once she shed the body that was malfunctioning. And uh, the other thing was a man, it was a, I did a, a party at a house party, and there was a man, he was an artist, he was trying to, he, he was a good painter, he had paintings, and he was trying to, you know, show his work and get out there as an artist. And I'm like, wow, I think you're really gonna, the reading showed all this great stuff. I'm like, I think you're really gonna, you know, be making it as an artist. It looks like, you know, your dreams are coming true and it's just gonna be bigger, better, more than you ever thought. And I was, you know, so encouraged by the reading. And then the wife called me shortly after that. He died of a heart attack shortly after that, unexpectedly. So it's funny that, you know, death shows up as this great, beautiful thing in the tarot. And I didn't even realize either time that either one of these people were gonna die by the reading and that the death card wasn't there. It was all this glorious, beautiful things happening to them, and here they passed. You know, there's little signs and symbols that we all get. Another thing that happened to me real recently, um, I've, I've, I've made another video about my magic radio. I had this car that the radio would just come on and off, you know. Uh, but the radio was in a phase where it was off, it was not working. <laughs> and I'm just saying it to myself. So I didn't really have this song in my head or any. I mean, I didn't, hadn't heard it on the radio recently, but all of a sudden I start singing Tommy by The Who. You know, Tommy, can you hear me? Can you feel me near you? Can you touch and see me? I can't even think of it without singing, but I just kept singing that song over and over again. And then I realized the guy that I'm, uh, there was a guy, Tom, that I knew who passed when we were really young. And he stayed with me for a long time too, through dreams actually. But this is, you know, we were still in high school. This is over 20 years ago. But so I'm singing, I'm singing, Tommy, can you hear me? And I'm singing the song and everything. And then I look, I look up, I'm not even realizing where I'm at. And I'm right, I drove, I was driving right by the spot that he was killed at. He was in a motorcycle accident. And I was, as I'm singing this song, I was right by the spot that he was killed at. So, you know, they, there's those little signs and those little symbols. And you need to trust those. You are the best person to, you don't need to go to a medium necessarily. I mean, those little signs and symbols, you know them. You know those little secret things, those little things that the, only the two of you shared. And I'm telling you, they're trying to communicate with you. I really do feel that people are too caught up in their grief to, you know, because even like with my brother, I could hear him clearly, but I'm just like, no, no, you're dead. And I was just so much in my grief. And I, but he was, you know, he was right in my ear. He's like, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just outside my body, you know, blah, blah, blah. The conversation was just as if, he's like, no, no, I'm right here outside my body, you know. And the conversations that we had before I told him to buzz off, basically, to go find Dad, you know, they were just as if the conversations we would have in life. Okay, so my rock and roll quote from today is from Mr. Bob Seeger, and it is, Sometimes at night I see their faces, and I feel the traces they left on my soul. All right, remember that you are love and beauty incarnate. I hope you appreciate these free videos that I make and remember that donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting, donating, and I'll talk to you soon.